Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer for the new Boston. <clears throat> and in this tutorial, uh, we're going to continue working on the log for our game. Now you may be, may be wondering, um, how are we going to use the name of the zombie, or not zombie, the enemy, um, if we don't have name variables that store their names? So what we can do is, let's come, in, come into each class, we'll do public string name as string and we'll set it equal to zombie now there is one problem with this this would seem like a simple solution but if we come over here to form1.vb or yeah form1.vb you can see that current enemy is of type enemy and so anything that current enemy can do um, enemy should be able to do too so if we're calling a current enemy function here or a method or a variable, um, enemy has to contain that variable. So we'll come over here and we'll get rid of this and that's not needed. So we'll do public string name as string. And you can ignore that thing I was just deleted because uh, I was just experimenting with the code. So we've got public string name as string. So now we can come in here. You can see that we get um, uh, a message that says it conflicts, it conflicts, I mean, with a uh, string name in enemy. So in order to get rid of that, instead of redeclaring string name, we can just go ahead and set that equal to a value. So it's going to be zombie. And we need to go ahead and copy this, or we'll cut it. And we need to put it in our constructor. So the name's gonna be equal to zombie when a new zombie class is created. So in our constructor for dragon, we'll do string name. It's going to be equal to dragon um, villain. String name is going to be equal to villain. Okay, so now that we have string name for each of the enemies, and it's in the enemy class, so we can use it um, on an enemy object, we can go ahead and use that whenever we need it. Okay, so now that we've got all this working, we've created our damage arrays. Um, we've used names and some indirection to make it easier to access parts of our program and our variables. What we want to do is go ahead and create one of the logs. Now we have eventlog.vb. Now this isn't just going to automatically open when our program run, runs. We have to tell it to open because form1.vb is the uh, form that is run by default and no other forms will run. So we need to come into form1.vb and whenever it loads we need to create a new log. So we'll just declare one of those. So dim new log as new event log and we need to do event log vb. Now it looks like we lucked out here because there's already an event log built into Visual Basic, so we did event log VB. So after that's done, what we need to do is type new log dot show. So it will show us our new log. Now we want to be able to access new log outside of just form one dot load. So we can go ahead, cut this right here, and we will paste it. Um, in the class itself and we'll just declare it as private so now that we have new log and it shows when it's open um, let's go ahead and add some stuff to the log but first I'll show you um, that it opens with it so here is our um, game and then here is our log you see it says event logger has successfully loaded and it allows you to select indexes of this so we'll go ahead and close out of these. So whenever you attack the um, the enemy, after we attack them, what we want to do is we want to create that event. So we will just type new log dot list events or we don't want list events. We want to do, let's see here, 
figure out what the name of that is add event so we want to add an event so new log dot add event and we need an event as a string so since create event is a function and it returns a string we can use that as the argument for add event so we can just add event and we can create event and then the argument is going to be um, Popeye dot name okay so this might be a little bit confusing to you but we we added an event to our list box and for the arguments of that we use create event which is a string because that's a, a function and it use it returns a string and that function requires an argument itself which is the name of whoever uh, it's making the event for so we'll do that once more for the enemy attack so let's see as soon as it attacks we want to create the event but first we have to type new log dot add event and then we want to create an event so create event and then we'll do um, current enemy dot name or string name so it's going to create an event based on their name and it's going to pass that to the add event method in new log so hopefully we won't get any errors from this okay so here's our game and I'll just drag the log over here and if we attack looks like we got an error here okay so we got a bit of an error there and I'll tell you why so whenever Popeye it adds the log for Popeye it says hero dot attack damage which is a an array of integers and it uses at index of attack num now we can't put an in integer into a string um, uh, an argument that takes a string or returning as a string we can't put an integer in there um, so we need to convert that to a string so this is going to be the number um, this is going to be the damage that is returned which will be an integer and then we just convert that integer integer uh, to a string so we'll do that once more for this one so current enemy dot uh, for the attack damage dot to string so we've converted each of those to a string now we'll go ahead and try this one more time and it says event logger has successfully loaded and then we can go ahead and attack and you can see that it says Popeye has used kick for 10 damage and then zombie has used punch for 10 damage and let's just use spinach now you can see that it says 10 damage right in here we haven't accounted for in case Popeye uses spinach and we're going to be learning about that uh, in the next tutorial see Popeye uses kick for 10 damage and then he uses 5 let's see let's try to get Popeye to use anchor throw uh -huh. Popeye has used anchor throw for 15 damage so what this does is it just logs everything that happens um, each time one of the users attacks or gets attacked so we'll go ahead and close out of that let's go ahead and put this code in if you haven't already then once you've done that uh, if you don't understand it leave some comments and I'll try to answer the, any questions for you and then after that, move on to the next tutorial.